What's up? I've already tried to get them drunk. <laughs> y'all, if I sound weird, it's because I'm losing my voice. Like, that's how y'all know. I just talk too much. I talk too much, y'all. Like, these are the problems that I be having. My voice is gone. But that's not stopping anything because I have multiple videos to get out. Okay? Multiple to get out. I just don't want to see no comments about how I'm sounding, girl. Okay? I'm reviewing Young and Reckless episode four. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. This is already late. So let me, <laughs> baby, because I really should have posted this like on Monday, but let's go ahead and get into it. So the episode starts off with basically, you know, showing that Milan is a fake ass hoe because she was behind Renee's back saying one thing in Renee's face saying another. Okay. Like I said in the last review, it seems as though Milan was kind of just switching up her story or switching up she would say according to who she was talking to and it gives very much fake so she ended up getting called out on her shit for it. So Renee was like, girl, so now that you're getting called out on your ish for it, don't look, don't look at me for help. Okay, you didn't want to help me, <laughs> you're for to get what you're going to get and I'm not going to help you. All tea, no shade. It's none of my business. You turned a blind eye to me when I was getting jumped right in front of you. Now, guess what? You're going to get what you're going to get, and I don't care. My name's Bennett, and I'm not in it. So I'm right. not going to fight somebody because you're fighting. You get what I'm saying? If she got a problem with me and me and her got a problem, right. we're going to fight. I don't expect you to fight my fight. You got to want to help a real bitch, a trill bitch like that. So she didn't feel the need to help a trill bitch, so I'm not going to help her. Baby Tyson decides she wanted to pick up a little pet friend and just go, uh -huh, and fling it at me. So again, they're having a conversation. More and more is coming out about how Milan is fake. And Baby Tyson is just, she's not shit, girl. <laughs> Baby Tyson is just not with it, girl. So they end up going inside and Baby Tyson throws the fan at her. And then they get to squabbling. When I tell y'all I'm not playing. Because <laughs> y'all think I like to over-exaggerate things. When I tell Hell yeah, baby Tyson. <laughs> baby Tyson tore Lord Farquaad up. <laughs> baby Tyson tore this hoe up, tore her out the frame, walked her down. Okay, I'm talking about turned this hoe into a tornado. Who said that on the show? One of the girls was like, baby, she was looking like a tornado girl. She was spinning. It gave cyclone, it gave tornado, baby. She turned you every way but loose. <laughs> and Milan kept going back for more and more and more. And every single time she ran up and she kept running up and she kept wanting to continue to fight. Baby Tyson continued to tear her, kept tearing her up. She was not keeping up with Baby Tyson. She was not, it was not a tie. Baby, you got tore up every single time. Girl, no shade. Did you even pinch this hoe? Like, girl. And I don't feel bad for her because that's what you get for being a fake. That's what you get. Like, no shade. It's not even, like I said, it's not even about the jumping thing. I feel like the jumping thing was kind of fake. Like, you sat there and, you know what I'm saying? You came into the house, made it seem like you and Renee was buddy-buddy or whatever. And then when it hit the fan, you wasn't there for her, right? So that's fake within itself, but I'm really not talking about that. But if she would have just stood on the fact that, you know what, girl, I just met you. I just met you. This is our first time meeting in person. I don't know you like that. I'm not finna jump in for you. It, it's wrong. But if she would have just stood on that, I feel like none of this would have happened. Like the girls kind of got over the fact that she didn't jump in, right? They got over the fact that she didn't jump in. It was the, her lying, like, you telling Mel Fox one thing and then going back and telling Renee another thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it was just fake all across the board. Like, if she would have just stood on the fact that I'm not jumping in, I said what I said, I don't know her like that, you wouldn't do it for me, y'all wouldn't do it for me, I don't want to hear nothing. No yeah, if she would have just stood on it, I feel like this wouldn't be happening. But the fake-ish going back and forth and carrying the bone and you saying stuff about Renee and how you just met her six seconds ago and stuff like that, girl, bye. Like, I feel like that was a justified ass whooping. I, I feel like it came from the wrong person. You know what I'm saying? 
saying? Because Baby Tyson really didn't have anything to do with it. She wasn't being fake towards Baby Tyson. So I feel like it came from the wrong person. But, like, whatever. Like, <laughs> Baby Tyson definitely inserted herself where she was not needed. But I'm not mad at her. You know what I'm saying? I'm not mad. Because, girl, she, she was tired of hearing the fake-ish. Like, hush. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you're fake. Like, that's it. It is what it is. I did not feel bad for Milan. Do I feel like it should have came from somebody else? Other than Baby Tyson, yes, because again, Baby Tyson had nothing to do with this. So it's like, girl, you, girl, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, girl, you wanted your first fight, girl, just say that. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. You should have been, you know what I'm saying? You should have been, you should have been real. So the next morning, Baby Tyson goes into Milan's room while Milan and the rest of her roommates are sleeping. And Baby, she goes into her bathroom and takes her wig. Now, I don't care how y'all put this. I feel like this was bummy. Even back on Bad Girls Club, when they used to go into each other's rooms and take each other's stuff, destroy it, take it, steal it. I never agreed with this, even when I was younger. And I don't agree with it now. And it's not even like... <laughs> it's not even the fact that she took it. It's the fact that she had it installed. It's, what, it's, what's, it's what's throwing me off, like... Like, if she would have been like, if she would have took it, it's still wrong either way. Don't get me wrong. Like, I feel like you're a thief. You know what I'm saying? You went into somebody else's room, went into their personal belongings, and took their stuff that they paid for, right? Okay. The reason behind why she did it, why she did it, I just don't, I, I'm not really, I'm not jacking it. Like, I'm really not. Like, you're mad because she ripped your wig in a fight. That you started with her. No shade. <laughs> no shade. Like I said, I don't feel bad for Milan because I feel like Milan is a fake ass hoe and she got what she got. You know what I'm saying? But baby Tyson initiated that fight. So you're mad because keep <laughs> as if you whooping her the way you whooped her wasn't enough. <laughs> as you literally turning her, literally turning her every way but loose in that altercation was not enough. Baby Tyson, it wasn't enough, girl. <laughs> you already, like, you already won, like, girl. So, Baby Tyson was mad because Milan snatched her wig off and ripped it. So, okay, so it's like, I want to understand. I want to. I want to. Because it's like, girl, you ripped my wig. But Baby Tyson started it. Like, she... <laughs> Girl, she couldn't get no hits and she really wasn't effing with you during the altercation, girl. She couldn't even, I don't even think she pinched you, girl. She couldn't do much. So that, you know, girls who can't fight and girls who can't get down or girls who are losing, what are they going to do? They're going to resort to pulling hair. That's what she did. I'm not saying that she's right for ripping Baby Tyson's wig, but I'm saying it's an altercation that Baby Tyson started like. I don't know how to die. I don't know how else to break it down. Like, you started it, mama. Like, y'all got y'all got y'all ones in. Y'all went multiple rounds. You won every single one. You literally was, girl, beating her like a drum. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally, and them baby, them, them hits was connecting. No shade. You, you were doing her in. So it's like, that wasn't enough. Like, you got to go and steal her stuff too. That's crazy. Now, what I thought Baby Tyson was going to do is, I thought Baby Tyson was going to take the wig and make her, like, fight her for the wig. Like, <laughs> that's what I thought she was going to do. I thought she was going to do that. No, she did not. She installed it. But we're not, this is not the first time that we're seeing something like this. Didn't Ivory do this exact same thing on Young and Reckless Season 1? So let me tell y'all something because some of the fans, y'all be real biased, child. If y'all applauded Ivory for her shenanigans last season, aka literally stealing somebody's wig and refusing to give it back, <laughs> girl, but you were mad at Baby Tyson, I'm gonna need y'all to get y'all life together because at least me, at least I called the girls out on all of their BS, okay? It's bummy. You're a thief. That's it is what it is. I like baby Tyson, but it was it was a bum thing to do. I said what I said. So girl, okay, so girl, so girl, so girl. Milan is sitting up in the bed, girl. She looked tired. She like she just woke up and now she gotta deal with the BS again. So with this entire situation, the whole wig stealing situation, I don't feel bad for Milan, but I'm more so like on baby Tyson. Like I'm more so like questioning her character, baby Tyson's character, because it's like, girl, you're a thief. Like, no shade. Like you're you're a thief. 
But do I feel bad for Milan? No, I don't. I said what I said. I don't feel bad for her. I really don't. But it's still more so like a... Just because I don't feel bad for Milan, and just because I just... I don't really have much sympathy for her because I feel like she came into the house trying to impress people and trying to be fake. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel bad for her, but that doesn't change the fact that baby Tyson did what she did. You know what I'm saying? So girl, Milan is sitting up in bed, girl, tired as ever, girl. And <laughs> she just got her wig took again, okay? But she like really got, it took this time. Baby Tyson is like, girl, you ripped my wig. You're gonna have to come up off of yours. And she's just sitting there not doing anything. So do I feel like she's scared of baby Tyson? I don't feel like she's scared of baby Tyson. Maybe she was just over it. Like, I don't want to just uh, automatically jump the gun and be like, oh, she's scary. Maybe she's over it. But it's like, girl, get your, I would have, about, about somebody touching my stuff. I don't care when, lose, or draw. <laughs> I don't care. You're not about to come into my room and take my stuff and i'm gonna just sit in bed and let it happen baby go splash your face with some water and go get your wig back in blood no shade either that or if you feel like you can't beat her baby if you can't beat them join them you should have matched her and should you should have went in her room and <laughs> yeah turned up turn me up i'm finna go in your room i'm about to match you baby i'm about to take your stuff too if you even have anything because i see you like to steal Okay, so Milan ends up getting out of bed, and instead of this is this is what gives me scary about you, baby girl. Okay, she gets up. Okay, she gets up, and instead of just confronting baby Tyson or bringing the issue to the hoe that just came into your room and stole your wig, instead of bringing it to her, guess what you do? Guess what you do? You start you start damaging the house. Me personally, I feel like she did that so she could be sent home. Like, I feel like she's scary. But at the same time, I feel like she did it to get back at production because it's like, y'all are the ones who let this bum come into my room. Why would y'all do that? But at the same time, girl, they're not the one who stole your wig. Baby Tyson is girl. Go get your issue with the, like I said, with the girl that's literally having your, your wig installed in her head as we speak. You're taking it out on the wrong person, girl. Go get your issue. Go get your wig. If it's that serious. So now she outside. She finna get kicked out. She not finna get paid. Girl, bye. You, you're outside looking dumb. You're yelling. You're mad. But you still ain't got your wig yet. And you still left the house without your wig. So, like, what did you gain? You're not getting a check. You're not getting paid. You lost a fight. You're fake. You got exposed for being fake. You lost a fight. You lost about three, four rounds back to back by somebody literally that you're twice their size. You're just embarrassing. No shade. Girl, bye. We're not going to miss you. Next. Baby Tyson did not wash this wig. Baby Tyson. <laughs> the whole thing was just so bummy. Baby Tyson didn't even wash the wig. My thing is, you could have at least washed it. Like, no shade. Like, if you're going to be a bum and steal somebody's wig, you could have at least washed the wig, girl. Okay, so shortly after this, Ivory makes her way into the house. Y'all know what's going on. It's big mother Ivory, and I'm back again for season mother two. Y'all know they have to bring the mother back. I didn't come to the show on day one. I think that's because they were sparing a few bitches, you know? They want a bitch to come in the house and just be a little comfortable and not intimidated or scared to walk through that motherfucker, which I feel like was the worst motherfucker mistake they could do. Okay, so Ivory goes with Ferrari. She goes with Ferrari, and this conversation, honestly, I was kind of bored. Like, it was basically Ferrari trying to tell Ivory what to do. Like, pretty much, that's how I took it. Like, I, you know, like, I feel like Ferrari is trying to really, she's trying hard to establish herself as the host. You know what I'm saying? Because last season, it was more like she was friendly, friendly, buddy, buddy with him. And she was friendly with him. Now she's trying to like completely switch it up and be, a, which I don't mind. But it's like, you can't tell a grown woman what to do. Like, especially if she has unfinished business with people. And y'all know, I don't really care too much for Ivory. And I love me some legacy and Melanie. But I feel like Ferrari was irritating me right here because it's like, if Ivory has an issue with somebody why are you trying to give her a pep talk to not do this and not do that? And, oh, just be cool. And, okay, cool. But she can get her issue first. What the hell? 
Like this scene really was just Ferrari repeating herself over and over and over again, trying to get Ivory to not like, girl, please. That girl gonna do what she wanna do. But I'ma still give you an A for effort. I thought that this was a cute moment between, a cute and mature moment between Sav and Legacy. Pretty much Sav was just like, you know, I just want everybody to drop their issues and be a sisterhood. Legacy was like, girl, I'm willing to be cordial. I'm willing to be cool. I'm willing to put things to the side, but a sisterhood is a stretch. I just thought that this entire scene, it was just real. It was a real scene. You know what I'm saying? And I enjoyed this scene with these two pretty girls. And this is once they were dolled up in at the photo shoot. Chow, meanwhile, outside of the photo shoot, baby Tyson is sitting with some of the girls, including Ferrari, and they are talking about Milan, recapping that situation, talking about how she's not going to get paid. Girls just spilling some tea. And they also said, <laughs> and they were also talking about her car, how she's really broke in real life. She put on the front, this, that, and the third. I'm like, chow, it was just a mess. But let's get on this wig. Let's get into this install. Girl, baby Tyson had this wig fully installed into her head. And let me just say this. It's bum. It's bummy. I don't care. <laughs> I don't have nothing much else to say about that. It's bummy. She didn't even wash it. Ew. So after the photo shoot, all the girls are in the Sprinter now. And I mean all the girls. Now they have Legacy and Mel, Melanie Fox, in the Sprinter with Ivory. And y'all know it's hella static. So Ivory is throwing shade, child. She talking-ish. She throwing shade. She taking back liquor. And I'm talking about taking back like an unhealthy amount. Like I'm like, why is nobody talking about how much she's drinking? So like I said, not only is she throwing these shots back like crazy, but she's also throwing shade as well. She's throwing shade. She's talking her ish. Girl, it's just, it's just a lot of tension in the air. And Mel is not saying anything, girl. Mel is taking the child to the point where she starts to cry. Now, y'all let me know how y'all feel about this. Do y'all feel like Melanie Fox is scary or do y'all feel like... She just, like she said, because she claimed that she was crying because she knew she could not do anything in that moment. It's a crowded sprinter. You know what I'm saying? They're all drinking. They just got back from a photo shoot. There's not much that she can really do inside of here. So she's crying out of frustration. That's what she is saying. But do y'all feel like she's scary? How do y'all feel? I don't think that Mel is scary. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to sit here and call her scary because we already know that her and Ivory have gone round after round after round multiple times. So clearly she's not scared of Ivory. Okay. And in my opinion, she either keeps up with Ivory or she, or she mobs Ivory. You know what I'm saying? Like there's really no in between. So scary? No, but I do find it weird I'm just saying, y'all know I love me some Melanie Fox, but I'm not biased, y'all. I do kind of find it weird that Melanie Fox has been vocal, very much vocal, this entire time when Ivory has not been in the house. But now that Ivory is on, now that Ivory's in the building, she's not really saying much. It could be intimidation. I really don't know. Like, I don't know what to call it because me personally, I'm not going to dim down my personality just because my op is in the building. Like, I really don't. Like, and I understand, God, you got to keep your head on the swivel. You got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to read the room, keep your head on the swivel. But Ivory's on the whole other side. Like, what is she really going to do to you? Why aren't you being yourself? Why are you so quiet? This is not the mail that we've been getting this entire time prior to Ivory coming into the house. So I don't know. I feel like it's weird, but does it give scary? Uh, it gives scary a little bit, but I know, but we, I know what I've seen from Melanie Fox up until this point. So I'm not going to sit here and call her scary because I'll be a damn liar. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what to call it. Y'all let me know what, how y'all feel about the whole thing. But when it came to Nug... She was real quick to say something like, Ivory has been antagonizing you this entire... Y'all, I'm so sorry. And I know y'all love Melanie Fox, okay? I know y'all love Melanie Fox and I love me some her too, okay? <laughs> one, of the, one of the girls that I like the most, but y'all, I cannot just ignore something just because I like somebody. So I'm gonna say what I said. So, but then she uh, she's so quick to address Nug about a charger that Ivory took and put Nug's phone on the charger knowing that Ivory heard you say what you said. You know what I'm saying? Like, and she did that to antagonize you, but you're addressing Nug anyway. Like, I just don't know. Like, it's, it's I don't want to say scary. I'll give more so like picky choosy. Like, I don't even want to say picky choosy because like I said, I've seen Mel get down with Ivory. So like, I don't even want to say that. I don't know what to call it, y'all. I really don't. 
And I said what I said. I feel like Ivory is very much, like, I don't even want to say scary because, girl, we all know Ivory's not scary. But I feel like you purposely, because you said it yourself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get y'all lit. I'm going to get y'all lit. I'm going to give y'all these drinks. I'm going to do this on purpose. I'm going to get y'all drunk on purpose so so we can squabble. I feel like that is so lame. Like, girl, if you if you know you're not keeping up with Mel or if you know that you're not fucking with Mel sober, just say that. <laughs> really, though. Like, because, girl, I have never heard somebody say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get somebody lit so I can fight them. That's crazy. Like, I feel like you, you're you like a predator or something. Like, because what? And everybody's just not talking about that. Wow. And Nug, I'm looking at you weird too. It's just a whole lot of picky choosy activity going on. Nug, I'm looking at you weird too because you are so quick to pop off on certain people. And like I said, Canadian Barbie didn't feel bad for her. I feel like, I don't care. I feel like Nug ate her up. And I said, I said what I said. Y'all feel like she was in bully. I feel like she ate her up. Um... But you're so quick to snap on these girls, which again, you know, I like you, so whatever. But it's not really whatever because I'm not biased. Like, you're so quick to snap on these girls. But when Melanie Fox brought an issue to you and asked you what you wanted to do, you were not really on that. You know what I'm saying? I just don't like the picky, choosy behavior. I don't like it. Okay, so no shade. I feel like this entire situation was weird. I said what I said again. <laughs> I said what I said, like... Yeah, like, girl, first of all, let's, I, I, I just kind of want to get on everybody. So, Ivory, you're messy. <laughs> Ivory's messy, but whatever. Ivory is Ivory. That's whatever. So, Sierra, I don't understand how all of a sudden it's an issue. No, I understand why it's an issue because why do you have your name in my mouth? And why are you worried about if I'm going somewhere else to do what I want to do with my man? Like, I don't understand that. Like, why, like, I get her frustration. Don't don't get me wrong I understand her frustration but these girls been saying that like the f the first day Renee said that to your face multiple times and she was being messy with it and you did not say or do anything but now all of a sudden <laughs> but now all of a sudden it's an issue like I get why it's an issue I get why I get why she was frustrated I get why she was irritated we're grown women. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about what I'm doing. If I want to go outside the house, if I want to leave the house to go see my man, that's what I'm going to do. Like, the only person who should be worried about that is Ferrari in production because it's her show and it's their show. Like, y'all as cast members, as my peers, should never be worried about what I'm doing if I'm popping my cooter cat for my man outside the show, outside the house. Come on. Make it make sense. Y'all shouldn't. And, and I feel like they're lame for that, too, because why do y'all even care? So what? I said that about Renee the first day when Renee brought it up to Sierra. Girl, why are you worried about what she's doing? You're just trying to be messy. You're trying to clock tea, but you're not clocking. <laughs> you're trying to clock tea, but you're not clocking anything. Like, okay, she's popping that cooter cat. You know what I'm saying? With her man. And she left and she left the house to do so. So what? So what? <laughs> it sounds like you don't get enough. Peen, baby. Because you're worried about her getting peen and taking peen. You must not be getting enough. Or you must not be getting any at all, baby. And that's really the vibe that I'm getting from all these girls that are so worried about her leaving the house. Girl, the, like I said, the only person who should be worried about that is Ferrari in production. Okay, that's it. Nobody else should be worried about it, especially a cast member. Child, please. How is that affecting you? Anyway, so yes. So because of all that put into one, I understand Sierra's frustration. Trust me, I really do. But again, they have been brought this to her. They've been being messy about it to her and she never said anything. She never defended herself. She sat there like a quiet church mouse, baby. Didn't say nothing. But now all of a sudden, you ready to confront it. Girl, you should have been did it. What are we talking about? You should have did it the first day. You should have checked Renee the first day she brought it to you. She brought your business about what you do with your man to you. Girl, you should have been checked her and rightfully so. But why are you waiting to do it? Like, girl, it just didn't make no sense to me. And then Ivory hasn't been there. So Ivory is being messy and instigating and carrying the bone to the wrong person. You carrying to you carrying the bone and being messy and gossiping to Nug when Renee is the one that's been saying it. And Sierra is for Sierra to ask Ivory, oh, who who said it? Who said it? I need to know who said it. Girl, you know you said it because Renee literally said it to your face. Like, what do you mean? 
What do you mean? I don't understand. This this whole situation was just so dumb. I feel like not getting into it with Sierra was so dumb. I feel like that should have been Renee's fight because Renee is the one that can't it is so worried about um Sierra's cooter cat and what she do outside the house. So child, I read being messy, she carried a bone. Girl, not go out there. They're arguing. Chow. <laughs> the episode ends with Nug and Sierra getting into it. Girl, we already know who won that. So there's... <laughs> I'm going to wait till next week to speak on it when they show the full thing. But we all know who won that. I'm pretty sure Nug tore this girl out the frame. This little girl, okay? All because Nug wanted to end the conversation. <laughs> no, I kind of get why. Because I kind of get why. But it's like, it's still so dumb. Like... So, Nug, they were arguing or whatever. Nug walked away. She was like, you know what? I'm done talking about this. Like, and, which I understand because, girl, I'm not even the one who brought that into the house. Renee brought it into the house being messy. And she just, uh, like, whatever. Like, you're and now you're mad because I'm entertaining the conversation when you should be mad at the hoe who brought the conversation into the house. The hoe who brought the conversation to you the first day and you did nothing about it. Please. But you but you call yourself trying to snap on me. So I understand why Nug walked away. But as Nug is walking away, Sierra, <laughs> Sierra tells her, I'm not done talking. Chow. Please. <laughs> Nug turned back around. Chow. Sierra stood up. They Sierra already knew what it was as soon as Nug turned back around, Chow. And they get to squabbling. All right, y'all. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in to the end of the video. I love y'all so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. If you made it this far, go ahead and drop any pink heart emoji to let me know that you made it this far. I love you guys. It's Messy Maya. Bye.